see what we got. Uniforms for forced march will be... There's notices of courts, Marshal. Personal letter to Commandant Wilmington area. From a lady. Well, we know where it's all bound at any rate. And there's more to follow, listen. Supply column, arms, ammunition, uniforms, provisions. Thursday. How large a column? It doesn't say. But from what they're promising, it should be half a dozen wagons. Gentlemen, I've just had an attack of conscience. Think how bad that poor rider feels knowing he's lost his papers. And how upset the commandant must be not to get his letter. And those poor troops. They wouldn't know how to dress for a forced march. Exactly. Much better to let the mail go through and attack the supply column. I'd best go pick up that poor fellow, return his horse, brush him off and send him on his way. We'll be close by if he gives you any trouble. Trouble? I wouldn't know who set that rope. I'm a neutralist. <laughs> like a good place for a rebel ambush. Take a look up ahead. Make sure that explosion blocks the road. We don't want any British soldiers on General Lafayette's tail.
Lieutenant, look up there. Dismount. You're late. What is it? I'm not sure. I may have been seen. Wait here. We better move back. you're well covered by our muskets. See that you tend your wounded man and nothing more. Agreed. Light the fire. How many do you guess, Jeremy? I saw five on the way up. Shall we fight? One officer and three men. One badly wounded. Not much of a force, are you? We'll hold our own. If you care to try. It would be easy enough to pick you off. And we'll answer round for round. You'd be wiser to surrender yourselves and allow us to dig a way out. Would you prefer death to capture? I might ask you the same, my friend. You'll have to fight your way past us. Would you consider extending our truce so we can speak face to face? Agreed. I'll come before you, Lieutenant.
Lieutenant Martin, BEF. Captain. Just leave it at that. Captain. How many troops do you have in your command? Captain. My force has been instructed to remain out of sight. Obviously. You asked for a truce. What are your terms? Surrender. I accept. Your sword, please. Your surrender, not mine. You're not facing facts, Lieutenant. I know this mine. There's no way out save the way we came in. Now, are you proposing a pitched battle before the victor digs his way out? Or perhaps... Uh... Perhaps what? Well, we've extended the truce this far. We might extend it a bit farther. Say, long enough for us all to dig our way out together. If you need help, Captain, it doesn't seem you have much of a force. As one officer to another, I remind you of the uncertainty of battle. I'd hate to win it only to find that I hadn't enough men left to dig my way out. But of course, if you like, we can talk about it longer. Say, till a few pieces of wood burn up, till it grows cold and dark, and until the last bit of air we need to breathe is used up. All right. We join forces long enough to dig out. Under my command. Joint command. Agreed. Till we free ourselves. Can we trust you? You have the word of a British officer. That's why I asked. Henry, bring up the troops. A truce. A truce? With that rabble, sir? I've given my word. With all respect, sir, there's good men dead outside because of them. Not to mention the supply column of the king stolen. Nevertheless, we have a truce. Very well, sir. Build a larger fire over there. Bring MacDonald out and make him comfortable. One second, Corporal. Start by digging away the loose earth and shale. The shortest distance between us and there may not be a straight line. We may have to dig round the boulders. Or we'll use some of the shoring beams to push them out of the way. Let's get to it, Lieutenant. Davis, lend a hand. I don't suppose your military school taught you, Captain. But your first responsibility is to command. My first responsibility, Lieutenant, is to breathe. Army property is for British soldiers. Sergeant! If the lady needs a little water, allow it. Lieutenant, we could be trapped in here for a very long time. That is an order, Sergeant. 
British Army does not make war on girls. Small bloody difference if she pulls the trigger. Sergeant! Begging your pardon, sir. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's very good of you, miss. I said that... I heard what you said. If this wound isn't properly clean, the man will die of infection. I shouldn't think you'd care. It will make the odds better for you when we're out. I have no taste for death, no matter the uniform. Even yours. I've been concerned about that supply train to Wilmington. I'd feel much more at ease if I had confirmation of its safe arrival. I'll take a patrol out immediately, sir. Take the same route as they did, in case there's been any trouble. Yes, sir. And Rogers? Yes, sir. There's been reports of rebels in that area. If you come across any, I don't have to tell you what to do. No, sir, not at all, sir. said everybody, Sergeant. Oh, I didn't mean you, miss. I want to help. Again. <coughs> it's no use. Besides, this beam is too light. when we try again. Will we try again? Well, we'll try. I'm not sure it'll do any good. But I'd rather try than just sit here, wouldn't you? Thank you. Your name's Elizabeth, isn't it? Yes. It's a queenly name. Will we get out, Lieutenant? I... don't know. If this is the last few times I'm to be called, I'd rather it by name, not rank. here to win glory. I'm only doing my duty and it's not a particularly happy one. Then we invite you to leave. I can't. My family's always been military. My father expected me to follow tradition. I tried to get my orders changed. Could have resigned your commission. I'd rather face you colonials than my father. Besides, Captain, aren't you doing the same thing I am except on a different side? I'm fighting for something I believe in. Well, so is the king, Captain. Jeremy. We're wasting time with the battering ram. We've dug out all the earth and shale we can. 
But there are holes beyond the large boulders, with more earth beyond. You have an idea? Yes. We might be able to blow it free. With uh, our gunpowder? We'll need all the gunpowder we can get, Lieutenant, including ours. If we pack the powder between the boulders, it might open holes large enough to let in some air. Well, what's to prevent the earth outside from sliding down and covering them up again? Faith. Henry, I don't know much about these things, but doesn't it take air, oxygen, to make the explosion? Yes. Then if it doesn't work, we've thrown away a lot of the air we need to breathe. I'm afraid that's true. Well, Lieutenant, doesn't seem we have much choice. Sergeant, you will turn your powder over to this man. In addition, you will unload your pistols and turn that powder over as well. Disarm ourselves? For what, Lieutenant? We're going to blow an air hole through there. But to disarm ourselves? Sergeant, I'm growing very tired of your lack of cooperation. I don't care how many years since you took the King's shilling. I'm still in command. Yes, sir. We're disarming, too. If it's any consolation to you, Sergeant, you still have your sabers. We have none. He can have my powder, Sergeant. Somehow, breathing seems more important than following the King's regulations. They probably crossed us off the muster list by now, anyway. And I don't blame him. Thank you, Corporal. Quite welcome. Tell me, do you think there's any chance that this will loosen some of those rocks out there so that we could move them? No, I'm afraid not. We haven't enough gunpowder for that. Best we can hope for is to loosen enough dirt to let in some air. Good quality gunpowder you fellows use. I can't tell good from bad just by looking at it. The musket fires. It's good. How can you tell? Oh. I've been working with powders for some time. My father has a small apothecary shop. Is that so? My uncle has one too. In Manchester. Yeah. He mostly makes poultices for the stiffness and the headache. <sighs> we have a lot of headache here too. Uh, yeah, well, he has thought about coming to the colonies to set up shop. Didn't know how much coal they'd be. This country could always use another good chemist. Elizabeth, the fuse, please. Regulation, but effective. Hopefully, we'll be able to buy you a new one. We haven't much time left, and I don't see their signal. Oh, I'm sure they're all right, General. I saw them heading for the safety of the mine. Besides, they have a way of taking care of themselves. Still, they were to make a smoke fire to let us know. Could be the British regrouped and they don't want to give away their position. They're probably enjoying their little picnic safely hidden in the mine. With Henry eating most of the food. <laughs> You'd better go back now. I'll, uh, I'll tell my uncle what you said. Yeah. 
handle to. failed. It is still black as pitch. There's no light to be seen. <laughs> There's no light, Corporal. It's night. <laughs> Come and breathe some fresh air. <laughs> Give this man some air. He's in bad need. <laughs> Maybe you were better off as you were, Davies. When the air's bad, you fall asleep. And if you don't wake up, you don't know what hit you. But when you're out of food and water, your stomach rolls around in a ball of fire. I've had it. There ain't no other pain like it. beside my own. With the lieutenant's permission, the soldiers have a sack as his own. And we'll share what we have. We can divide mine, Sergeant. You have a sack, Sergeant. They're not prisoners. We don't have to feed them. No, we don't. But we're going to. Compliments of His Majesty. It's not much and won't last long, but have it anyway. Then I suggest some sleep. Grateful. At the fork, there's a gradual slope, and it's a rising grade. Now, I think there's less earth between us and the outside, right up there, than anywhere. To dig straight up? It's a risk. We have to understand that. We don't know if we must dig up 14 feet or 40. But we have an adequate shoring. And what's to prevent a total collapse right on top of us? Nothing. And we could be digging out under some huge boulder in that case. <sighs> Doesn't seem to be any other way. We won't last in here. Joint command means joint decision. I can't make this one on my own. Captain? I've made mine. Sergeant Rogers! Over here! What is it? I found something. Bring it down. After he almost to come down on the poor beggars. Come on. If we call out to them, it may mean capture. Or death. <coughs> it could also mean life to all these people. 
<laughs> Lieutenant, British soldiers outside the mine. Uh, report to headquarters. Tell the Major what we found. Ask him if we're to hunt for bodies or just at the beggar's feet. Are you sure? I heard them. Uh, rest easy, boys. We've got a bit of a wait. Over here, out of the sun. Gunpowder left. There's no sense crying about that, Sergeant. <coughs> Are we going to stand here or, or dig ourselves out? Did any use try? Soldier learns to do things for himself. Needs a hand from no one. Most of the British army must be made up of mules. Mm. Getting pretty hard to tell which of us is which, Sergeant. Except that uh, one of us is stubborner than a mule. Digging. It's better than just sitting here, waiting. To die? Yes. Better. Hard, isn't it? Out there yesterday, all trying so hard to kill each other off. And today, this? And if we do get out? your home? Bray. Near London. In Berkshire, past Windsor. What is it like? Green rolling hills. The Thames flowing quietly past. That sounds lovely. Doesn't it, Jeremy?
escaping. Well, that's that then, isn't it? If we stay here, we'll be dead in two days. Starvation or thirst. <coughs> I'm terribly sorry. I so hoped I was right. This time of all times. I'm sorry. Well, rebels or not, if I'm to go, I'm glad it's with the likes of you. Begging your pardon, Lieutenant. No pardon needed, Corporal. about it. It's burning brighter as if there was a draft. Draft. Easy, please. No sudden moves. Out of the mine and into a noose. Put up your pistol, Sergeant. I'm Lieutenant Martin. So we thought you were buried in the landslide. Well, we were trapped in there. We just dug ourselves out, as a matter of fact. Well, who are these people, sir? They are civilian, Sergeant. Passers by. They heard our cries for help and dug us out. We're very grateful. How can that be, sir? We've been camped just down there. We never heard them digging. We never saw them. Just the noise a few moments ago. Sergeant. Are you questioning the lieutenant's word? No. Then if I say they dug us out, that's a fact, isn't it, Sergeant? Yes, sir. If you say so, sir, I... Would the lieutenant care to make his report to my major? Um, I'll uh, be reporting to my own commanding officer. Do you know where he is? Wilmington, sir. Wilmington it is, then. My respects to your major. Tell him that's where I'm headed. <laughs> remember? The truce was up the minute we crawled out. But we thank you for the temporary reprieve. The reprieve, Captain, is permanent. We'll be leaving. That way. Let's hope we don't beat again in battle, Captain. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Goodbye. You know, Lieutenant, you never did tell us your Christian name. It's Jeremy. <laughs> Sergeant. 
Sergeant? Sir. Prepare a letter for MacDonald. Right, sir. Yes, sir. Did you have any trouble, sir? No, Henry. Your estimate of their strength was accurate, and uh, your barricade walled off all pursuit. Well, that's good to know, sir. It was a little hard to tell from where we were. <laughs> Just what is it you all seem to find so amusing? Uh, nothing, sir. Will there be anything else? No, not at the moment, Captain. I trust you gave this young lady's uncle a better reason for the lateness of a return than the one you've given me. I guess I did, sir. General, you've been to England. Do you know Bray? Yes. What's it like? Well, rolling hills, quiet lanes, there isn't much difference really between Bray and your own Chester. Why? That's what I thought. <laughs> I realize you are a secret society, but can I not be trusted? Forgive us, General. It's my doing. Mr. Franklin, once counseled in Poor Richard's Almanac, the 1741 edition, I believe, if you would keep your secret from an enemy, tell it not to a friend. young British soldiers returned to England, their contacts with America's many young rebels led to important changes. The personal power of the king was sharply reduced, and in its wake there was a rebirth of British constitutional freedoms. 